What's up there, YouTubers? I'm gonna do another kind of bright video again, the reflection on the face. Today's video, we're gonna talk about Verizon wireless billing issues. That's what's coming up. So it is officially 9.41 p.m. I'm gonna have my cup of coffee, but kinda need it to stay focused. I'm gonna really try to drive hard into these YouTube videos again, and uh, I'm gonna try to create a better format. So we're talking about Verizon wireless billing issues, specifically in the wireless end. Um, I've never had Verizon BIOS, I've never had Verizon, well, I have had like the home phone landline. That's a whole different topic. Uh, might touch on this might do another video not sure if you guys would like to hear about my experience with the landline issues uh, go and just leave a comment below because it's been pretty obscene but today we're actually talking more specifically on the Verizon wireless side of things and uh, whoa, earthquake <laughs> no I have my laptop propped everything just don't worry about it my setup is none of your concern <laughs> um, but we're gonna talk about about eight to nine main things so number one we're going to talk about how much your bill is month to month with verizon wireless number two what day of the month your bill falls on number three the format of payment being received whether they're going to allow you to pay cash payment or credit or debit or by check money order however in store over the phone over the internet whatever and then we're also going to talk about fees you know that could be acquired by having their service and then also we're also going to talk about number also 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 <laughs> number five what you actually have in your plan and how it compares to what you pay for um, compared to what other companies might provide for similar prices number six are there better options out there and if there are why not switch and uh, it's an understandable topic, I get it. So number seven, um, the actual coverage of the service, which kind of coincides with number eight, the phone that you have versus what the provider is giving you. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just kind of run through these quick. I'm not trying to make this a long video. I know when people make numbered videos, they're like number one, and then 10 minutes later, they're like number two. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna rush through. So number one, how much your bill is month to month. Um, so my experience with Verizon Wireless is month to month, generally it's gonna be the same price, but Quite a few of you have noticed that sometimes the bill might, it might change. So, for instance, let's say your bill is $75 a month. Maybe the next month it might end up being $76.03. Or the month after it might be $56. And why the variation? We're really not sure. Um, just is what it is. So... You know, and the inconsistency is just something to address. Number two, what day of the month your bill falls on? So, some people like to have their bills come out. Like, I, I, I'm a disabled veteran, and I receive my payment on the 1st, or sometimes on the 31st, or however the day falls. Um, so, for that reason, I have all my bills auto-paid on the 2nd. If I was having a Verizon wireless bill, and one of the main reasons why I switched is because I could not consistently rely on the bill coming out on the right day so I switched it's just my you know my preference but I, I've also been helping somebody out with the Verizon wireless bill which kind of led to this video and you know some months it's due on the 27th some months it's due on the 29th some months it's due on the 22nd which is such a wide variety and if you're paying this based on a paycheck that you get week to week like this paycheck goes to this this paycheck goes to the car this one goes to rent and this one goes to the phone bill well if the phone bill kicks a week or so earlier or a week or two later can kind of cause a swing effect so um there's that so let's say based on that 
there could be some fees acquired and uh, I'm gonna leave that one loosely that's number four we're gonna leave that loosely and kind of come back to that because that might coincide with some of the other points so number five what you actually have in your plan and how it compares to what you pay so for instance I currently have a phone service I'm not gonna place a name because I'm not gonna advocate switch to and this mine's better and you know I don't want any comments of like oh I had that and you suck you know just saying what I pay I pay $54 a month I pay $50 plus a couple dollars for things like uh, caller ID screening scam security and all that it cost me about four dollars so fifty four dollars a month same day every month unlimited everything it's what I pay for but I noticed with Verizon Wireless especially the account that I've been assisting with over the last nine months um, seventy five dollars and one cent is the standard and that's not like good to go but like I'm just saying like like talking like Trump it's the standard um, that's what the average monthly is um, and yet it still has data limits. So many gigs of data available. Oh, I only have so much data. Oh, I used up some of the data I had left. Oh, I gotta use it, otherwise it doesn't roll over. And I'm thinking it's 2020, it's September 2020. Why, why are you on a data plan where you have, like, I mean, if you're 90 years old, well, that's, that's kind of rude. I apologize to you viewers, but if you're, you know, if you're not one that uses YouTube or Google or any, any social media, anything where you're using online data, I can understand where a gig or two is reason, reasonable. But if you're a 32 year old and you're getting two gigs of data and only so many minutes of air time, nights and weekends, whatever, and you're paying $75, like you could be doing so much better and saving. <laughs> but that's just, you know, that's where we stand with that. Um, number six, are there better options out there? And if so, why not switch? And one of the things I've noticed is some people are just tried and true. Like I've been with the company I'm with going on close to nine years. Um, it's kind of like I'm, I'm just partial to them. I've had them for so long. Why would I possibly switch? Why? Well, it's kind of like I know their nature. I know the nature of the beast. So if something were awry, I know, I just know generally how that company is. So, okay, yeah, it's the only one time, but they've been good this whole time, you know? So I can understand that. There, there's an iffy push to like, why should I switch? Um, <clears throat> and then we go to number seven, the actual coverage of the service. So. One of the reasons why I switched from Verizon, this was, I, I, you know, this was a long time ago. Like I said, I've been with who I'm with for about nine years. Um, back in around 2010, 2011, um, I decided to switch because I had service everywhere. Like I could go into a tunnel and I had great service with Verizon, but if I was at work, I didn't. And if I was at my home, I didn't have the greatest service. One of the reasons I had issues was, well, which goes into number eight, the phone versus the provider. So I can't necessarily, I can't necessarily say that it was Verizon's fault that my phone did what it did, but I would have plans on Friday. Hey, when I get out of work, you guys want to hang out? You want to party? You want to whatever? We'll play foosball. I had, had a foosball table in my apartment, which was awesome. It was fun. Um, but I'd get out of work and I'd text everyone because that's what the plan was. Yeah. I hate the player. It drives me nuts because I'm watching myself record. So, um, you know, I had a foosball table, I had whatever, uh, mini fridge, beers, whatever, uh, adult beverages, adult waters. Um, so I'd get out of work, text everyone, hey, where are you guys at? When are you coming over? What's the deal? And, you know, I wouldn't hear anything. I think well all right I guess I guess I'll just uh, pop a bag of popcorn throw a movie on call it a night the next morning I'd wake up and I'm like man still nobody responded like I guess I'm I'm not the cool kid on the block and uh, what would end up happening is I'd say well you know it's 
still morning. I woke up at a decent time because I didn't stay up late having fun with people. So um, I guess I'll call my dad. He lives a few miles away and go over, swing over, have, have some coffee. And as soon as I'd place a call, like as soon as like an actual connection had to be made to make a call, boom, my phone would just vibrate for about six minutes with about 16 text messages, you know, seven to 10 hours later saying, oh, message could not be sent. Plus about 20 some odd messages from friends saying, are we still down to hang up? Hang up, hang out. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know if that was the phone or if that was the provider. I don't know if that was Verizon's issue or if my phone itself had issues. Um, so we're going to go over all this kind of as a last wash. This is my experience that I've had. I wonder if any of you have had that issue. And real quick while we're at it, if you made it this far in the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please like it. Subscribe. I kind of told you to do the same. Thumbs up and like it. I, You know, one or the other. Um, but also please subscribe and if you do Please go to the notification bell and make sure you click on all because Subscriptions nowadays on YouTube really don't mean much unless you go to all but also, you know everything with this is my experience that I've had years ago as well as a couple months ago nine months leading up to a couple months ago, so <clears throat> I talked about what you pay and the fees acquired and I told you I'd go back to it. So lately, the bill that I was assisting with, I've been paying with my debit card. Go onto the website, type the phone number, uh, verify the zip code. Here's the bill, pay it. Generally it was 7501. Well, funny thing with Verizon is... <clears throat> Let's say your bill was 60. If you don't pay it in January, the bill's 60. Come February, you're, you owe 60. Well, then February's bill is 60. So now you're $120. Well, going into March, you're 120 behind, but your account will still be active. But the second your balance goes over 150, it could be 149.99, account still live. But the second it goes over 150, you can't just pay like 60 to bring it back to active you have to pay the whole amount to get it back to active so being that the account bill is 7501 well 75 times 2 is 150 7501 times 2 is 150 and 2 cents well, regardless I always paid it on time and I just thought that was kind of a caveat like 7501 like who are you trying to kill if you don't know the policy I mean obviously if you pay the bill all the time you never you'll never have an issue but if you ever do fall behind, then you're going to kind of have that issue like 150 is the breaking point. And I've had a rough time, especially this year. A lot of us with the COVID, you know, forget about it. It's It's been a rough year. So just keeping that in mind. And, I, you know, I mean, policies are policy. They got to make their money. They're not going to provide a free service. And I get that. I just think it's kind of a sneaky thing, 7501. Like, why not 7499? <laughs> you know, you'd have two months, you'd still be good on the third month until come the third month lapse. But, um, and Verizon has their own, as far as I know, they don't, they don't send it to collections. They just hand it across the aisle and they have their own collection, their own lawyers. So it's not, you know, th they will get their money one way or another. Don't, don't get that wrong. So if you're somebody who's dealing with them, pay them, just get it done. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Number two is, since I've been paying it with debit, it's been like immediate. It's not been a check. It's not been like on the, on the whim. Maybe I'll pay it with something that'll be cash in a week. No. It's been directly paid. Like as soon as I submit it, two seconds later, my bank account comes off on my phone and says, thank you for the payment. Well, Verizon says, and then my bank says, you just submitted the payment of 7501, right? Sometimes it's 50, sometimes it's 90, but generally 7501. Well, if it's paid right then and there, it means it went through. Well, all of a sudden, the last two times it says you need to go to a location and pay cash only, which is awesome because of our convenient coin shortage. And then number two, 
when you do a cash payment, they charge you a $5 fee for cash because it's an inconvenience for them to handle cash. By no choice of my own, I have to pay cash. And then I'm also getting feed for it. And they, on their website, they explain that, I don't know necessarily on their website, but from people that work there, they explain like if there's been issues, things where it was late or not paid in full on time, they're gonna put you in that cash only status. And you have to maintain current on-time payments, current on-time payments with cash for at least six months to get out of the cash only status. So my question is, is has anybody had that experience? Has anybody been put in the cash only status? Uh, had any issues with coverage? Had any issues? And maybe it is the phone, because I, the phone I had, I looked up later and realized the phone had issues, not the service. But I also left them because paying my bill like regular, on time, automatic, no problem. And then boom, I get a $360 bill for no reason or everything would be fine and then my phone would be shut off and I'd call them up, what's the deal? $450 bill and I'm like, what did I do? Except for pay my bill on time and had crappy service the whole time. Couldn't call from home, couldn't call from work, everywhere in between, but I'm not trying to text and drive and talk on the phone while I'm driving. At least in 2011, because I didn't have Bluetooth in my car, so, you know, just, just a caveat there. So, if you had any similar experience, please, you know, give me some details in the comment section. And maybe I'll make another video as a follow-up on this, and uh, maybe we can discover some things where I made mistakes, somebody else made mistakes. This could be a learning experience for all of us. So, for anybody who made it to the end of the video, thank you so much. Um... Again, you know, if you haven't subscribed, please consider and hit the bell icon. And then uh, other than that, we'll see you in the next video. Peace.